I'm here in Hollywood, California, and I'm at this business that I've been wanting to interview this guy live and in person. His name is Brian Cometa, and he is the owner of $300 Data Recovery here in the L.A. Uh, area. Well, I guess it's not the L.A. area. It's, it's L.A. It's L.A. Studio yeah. City, L.A., Hollywood. It's yeah. all the same. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, there's a lot of famous Hollywood landmarks literally uh, just down the street, so <laughs> it's pretty cool to be here. We check in drives there, and then they come in here. So this is like oh, the. Oh, this looks like uh, <laughs> some work's getting done in here. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm peeking out. I'm liking this. <laughs> yeah. This is like nerd porn. Yes, it's very fun to be around. You build these computers yourself? Uh, these are just regular Dells, oh, okay. but they're all running uh, DeepSpar Disk Imagers, which is a certain hardware. It's actually this card right here is what DeepSpar makes. We have a bad drive connected directly to that, and then a good drive, uh, which we're cloning this to, mm -hmm. connected to the same computer. And the hard drive is not communicating through the BIOS at all, like a consumer uh, grade data recovery software would need. Right. Uh, this, is, this, this whole computer is booted up from this card. And the thing with the deep spars is that in order to clone a drive, so in order to clone a bad drive to a good drive, the good drive has to be bigger than the bad drive. Um, right. And so it has to be the same size or larger. Right. And so we could actually hook up a third drive, make that save the configuration data. Um, but instead, that's the reason why we have a lot of these large, we have eight terabyte and six terabyte drives. Well, that's an eight right there. This is an eight right here. So if we get a six terabyte, we can still clone it without using a third drive. Um, and if we have to clone an eight terabyte drive, which we actually have up on a different uh, tool right now, then um, we would have to use an eight, an eight terabyte plus a config drive. Are you hmm. using the StarTex for any technical reason or was it just the price was right? Price was right. Um, we have a lot of different enclosures here. We've gone through many. Uh, the Deep Spar doesn't play well with all of them. Um, and actually, these are only here right now. On this, th this deep spar has what's called the ATA add-on. That means if we wanted to, we can clone it to two other drives, including the, the original clone we're making. At the same time? At the same time. And the fans, are those something you added, or did they come with them? This comes with it, but we actually keep them off. Well, you don't even use them? No, we just... I've never even seen them. They're like not that. on because they, uh, they're really noisy. Because sure. since we keep all, we, we're using this stuff 24-7, yeah. um, a fan like that, after a couple of weeks, it's really noisy. Yeah. And as we know from using all of our other docks that don't have fans, they don't need fans. Spin right. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you a fan or not a fan? Of course, I'm not a fan. Every data recovery tech um, feels the same way about spin right. The problem is, so many consumers are into it that if you try to tell them otherwise, then they think you're just making stuff up. To you know, just like the freezer business. myth, because uh, everyone Let knows that you're supposed here. to Let you're supposed to freeze a hard drive if it's dead, even if you have no idea what's wrong with it. You just put it in the freezer, take it out, and then it'll work. Of course, this almost never works, and it can easily make things much worse. But it's such a common myth that people still try it. So it's the same as SpinWrite. Uh, it's a dangerous thing you can try to get your dry, to get your data back, um, but it may end up making things much worse. I'd say if you if you know you can't afford data recovery, if you can't spend three hundred dollars even to get your data back, then by all means try the freezer, and maybe you'll get really lucky and it'll work, or at least work long enough that you can grab some of the most important files off the drive. So this is our PC3000, it's called a UDMA-E uh, data recovery tool. But this is where we do all of our main diagnosis. When we do a RAID, we don't, um, we don't use the original enclosure or the original server that the RAID came out of. Uh, we just take the drives and we rebuild the RAID manually. When you 
you said earlier that you charge, you know, 300, 400, or 500. Right. Is that per driver? I mean, if someone sends in a raid right. and there's four drives, that's going to be more than $500. Correct. So, yeah, it's three, four, 500 for any single drive. Okay. Um, any raid is that same rate times so, the number of drives. Okay, because yeah. the rate is so complex. Yeah, mu it's much more difficult. Um, but the good thing about a raid, you know, a lot of times there's redundancy. So even if one drive dies completely or it has bad heads, which would cost thousands of dollars to get recovered elsewhere, uh, we can still recover all the data by using the parity data with the raid. If the drive is damaged to us, where this unit, these units over here, can't help, then mm -hmm. where does it go? Then it's going to probably go over here. All right. So these are three more DDIs on the right side. Uh -huh. And these are PC3000 Expresses. This is the card. This is the main component here. This is the actual PC3000 Express card. Um, and the that reason- That little card right there. Is more than $10,000. So you can buy a new car. Yep. Okay, so if you want to recover your own data, you can pay somebody to do it, or you can buy a $10,000 card. Right. Do it yourself. And that doesn't include the software. <laughs> oh my gosh. So 10,000 doesn't even get you in business. Uh, yeah, half oh business. You just and won't have all the features. All the SATA <laughs> cables coming out of the back of that. My goodness. Yeah, so the thing about the Express, which is cool and, and is different than the uh, UDMA-E over there, is the UDMA-E only has two ports, whereas this one has four ports. So this is how many drives we can work with simultaneously. So we have a portable clean room from Sentry Air Systems. Okay. Um, they basically make this just for hard drives and small purposes where you don't need a full walk-in clean room. These are getting into more moving machines after the clone's done. Okay. This is just a basic, this is exactly what you would do. Uh, that's and where I come, this is the, You this could do this part of the job. All right, gotcha. Yeah, and that's that whole room is movers. So all so, these computers. So across the hallway, we have another room with more computers. These, these are all starting to look alike to me. <laughs> yeah. Now this is a different room because look at all the monitors in here. That look, I don't know what's going on over here, but it's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh, those are like the little sticky things that come in external hard drives. One day they just started throwing them up. Here we have our uh, bad drive, our good drive. This bad drive has bad sectors, and right now those are appearing as yellow, and the green are 100% recovered. Um, in this case, you can see these little check marks because we're targeting just the files we want. Since this has bad sectors, if we tried to just recover 100% and do a perfect clone, it would take uh, way too long because we're going to be retrying these bad sectors over and over again. Um, and and, and the, the sectors. Size of the drive. I mean, if we're talking a two terabyte drive, and it doesn't even matter if there's 100 gigs on the drive, it's going to read every single sector regardless. Correct. Uh, uh, that's at least 100% clone, is, it's always ideal, but it may not be practical. Practical, yeah, in, in terms of time, especially if our customer doesn't want their data back ne next year. And, um, and you want to keep that three hundred dollar rate? Correct, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, actually, we'll go as long as it takes. <laughs> um, we have a drive here that's been on for months. What? Yeah, it's crazy. It's, months? It's, yeah, because it's a RAID. It's this drive. This is half the RAID. This is the other half of his RAID. But this drive just reads extremely that's, that's slowly. It's not an exaggeration. Not More an exaggeration. Than one month. It's been four or five seven. months. Yeah. Twenty four seven. Yep. Four or five months, and when this is done, you're not going to charge thirty thousand dollars for that. It's going to be the same price since it's a two-drive RAID. It'll be six hundred, and that's if our customer wants the data. If he didn't want the data we got back, uh, it's a hundred hundred dollar labor labor fee per drive. What would you say is the average length of time? Uh, our average turnaround right now is about four to six days. Okay. Um, but a drive, you know, if it's if it's an uh, eight terabyte drive and it's full and it has bad sectors, then it could take a couple weeks to make sure we get as many sectors back as possible. And our goal is always to get back as many good sectors as we can. Well, and a lot of companies charge a diagnostic fee. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. We uh, don't charge a diagnostic? We don't.
Does this keep the room cool? It helps. <laughs> yeah, it does. Are you doing any board level repairs here? We are doing. Um, I mean, am I seeing little chips in here? Is that <laughs> you are actually like. This is gonna have just a couple. I don't even know if my camera like, will zoom on that. Look how tiny that. Is. Let me see if I can. I think that's a. That what is that on your finger? I think is it's that a, a crumb? <laughs> I believe this is a TVS diode, from a from a drive with a bad PCB. You have to solder that on. Yeah, we remove them, and then we can. You can remove it and and hope it works. But what we typically do is just replace the whole PCB. Yeah, I was gonna say and that's swap crazy. the ROM. Yeah, you'd need like a magnus, a microscope. A oh yeah, really well, fine uh, soldering iron. Got this guy, and I don't know how much you know about hot air soldering. I don't know anything about hot air soldering. Never even heard of it. Or like a hot air gun. I, know, uh, I, I know hate soldering irons. I hate soldering irons. I've always hated them. I've never been good at them. You get burned a lot, or no? It's just messy, and you know. I, I've learned I've learned it at, like at classes and everything, but I and I can do it, but I just don't like to do it. Uh -huh. And then I found out about this stuff called Zeph paste, and this works the same as solder. Yeah. You squeeze a little bit of this on whatever chip you want to solder onto the PCB, yeah. heat it with the hot air gun, and it instantly works. I can show you if you want. It's pretty sweet. Let's say we plug this into the PC3000 and it's completely dead. We're not getting any lights, no noises, no activity at all. Uh, the first thing we'll probably do is try to swap the PCB. So we'll just say that this is the ROM. Right, we're we'll just pretend, pretend this is bad. And so I'll show you how the hot air gun works. So I'm going to set the temperature on this to about 350 and lower the pressure a little bit. And then it actually has air pressure, like a compressor. Yeah. And so I'm just going to slowly heat these legs, and eventually it's going to start to melt a little bit. I don't know if you can see like bubbling, but and normally I would take this PCB off and clamp it on here. This is just a spare parts drive, though. Mm -hmm. Should we just keep around? It's yeah, I can't room. imagine doing this with a soldering iron, but people have done it. And in fact, a lot of the times, a lot of times, what happens is we get um, a PCB from another shop Look who has easy. tried to solder it, and it just comes out horrible and looks really bad and or it's a mess. Or what happens if they leave the soldering iron too long and it overheats the chip next to it? And, and it burns it. it, or if they break one of these legs off of here, that's that's really bad. bad. Yeah, I mean, on, there's certain drives like a Seagate like this, where this ROM chip is unique, and if it's lost, the data is unrecoverable by anyone. Wow. Yeah, so you got to be very careful when you do that, when you mess with these. You better put that back. Well, here, let me <laughs> just show you this more for you, but. Sure. So this stuff, like, we don't need it here because there's enough. There's already enough left. There's over. already enough, but I'll just show you. So. And this isn't the best dispenser tip right now because it's so thick, but let's see. What is it dispensing? Is it? It's like a little paste. Does it look like thermal paste? Yeah, that's exactly right. Kind of gets clogged, so you gotta stick it with a pin. It's all very scientific. Okay. So I just squeeze, and you just need like the slightest tiny bit, and I'll just brush it on there like that. There we go. Just a little. That's even too much but it'll work for this mm -hmm. so you see how it's just a mess on there but then when we heat that up it's going to jump to the metal so I line these up and then as soon as I heat it it all jumps onto the legs and the solder pads really cool and now that's as good as new and it's on there hard that's awesome I've never seen that process before yeah and as far as I know I don't know anyone else that uses this stuff but I love it this is an SAS card in here that has four ports coming out so we could uh, work on four SAS drives at the same time
and we can we have more of those cards so we could do um more than 16. we did a 24 drive raid but i'm i don't remember for sure but i know we've done a couple of 16s all right so right here you've got uh, a Samsung 850 Evo naked. Uh, 850 Pro. What's an 850 Pro? Yeah. Now those have a 10 year warranty. Uh, this one died pretty quick. But I guess the warranty doesn't cover your data. All right, so you got an 850 Pro, and that's that's got to be pretty new. I mean. Yeah, that's r yeah, it's this year I think. Or and and yeah. is that being recovered on this machine right now? Yeah, so that's being recovered. the The problem originally was it would just stay busy which is maybe a data recovery term, but... Does that mean it would really be slow or it just didn't work at all? No, it just wouldn't work at all. If you connected the, a busy drive to a Mac or PC, it wouldn't mount, and the BIOS wouldn't okay. see it either. There's a more advanced SSD stuff too, so you know, there's companies that take these chips off, read each of those chips individually, and then use software to build it, figure out how they fit together. Yeah. But then the additional problem is that almost all SSDs now are encrypted also. Wow. So you read that chip, it's all encrypted data. <laughs> so that's just a whole nother problem. First, you know, we had to get it ready and you do that by shorting certain points on the board. And then we wow. connect these and it reads through here and that's like the terminal connection. That's how the program uses what's called a loader, which is like the PC3000 guys made made uh, like a way to start the drive using their commands or whatever. We've only had the add-on, the SSD add-on for maybe a year. Um, and you know... Uh, you Does it matter if it's a, uh, an MLC, a TLC, uh, 3D VNAND? It doesn't, it, certain things matter. The main thing that matters right now on SSD is if it's a Sandforce chip. Have you heard of that? It's the controller. Yeah, Sandforce controller yeah. is unrecoverable by anyone. 